let's investigate lines that are parallel and lines that are perpendicular to each other and how that affects the slope of the two lines. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines on my graph here. There's one. There's two. These would be parallel lines. We'll talk about perpendicular uh, a bit later. So if these lines are parallel, well you can probably see that the slopes of these two lines would be exactly the same. If we picked any two points on here, the rise and the run would be identical to each other. We would say the lines have the same steepness, which is really what slope is is measuring. So parallel lines this is the important part, parallel lines have the same slope. And I think that's that's probably easy for us to to see here that these two lines being parallel have the same uh, steepness, the same rise over run, um, therefore their slopes are the same. Parallel lines have the same slope. But I suppose we could say that if we we're looking at their y-intercepts, well unless they're the exact same line, the y-intercept would have to be be different. So two lines that are parallel and and are different from one another, they'd have the same slope, but the y-intercepts would be different. Otherwise, if, well, let's just finish writing this down. So parallel lines would have the same slope, but the y-intercepts would be different. Otherwise, if the y-intercept was the same, well, then the line would be exactly the same. So if they had the same slope and the same y-intercept, then they're really just the same line, because all, all of the properties of the line are the same. But as soon as their slopes are the same, but their y-intercepts are different, now we have two unique lines. So parallel lines for sure have the same slope. Their y-intercepts would need to be different if we're talking about two different lines here. Let's investigate the perpendicular line one. So I've drawn two lines here that are perpendicular to each other. Remember perpendicular means that they would intersect at 90 degrees. So the little box indicates that that's a right angle here. Well, this is a little bit a little bit trickier. Obviously the slopes are not the same. In fact, this one would have a positive slope because it's moving up to the right or the rise is positive. This one ha would have a negative slope because it's moving down as we go to the right. So right away we can say that perpendicular lines, you know, one, they're going to have opposite signs to one another. This this line here, if I made this up, might have a slope of two-thirds. Let's just assume the rise is two and the run is three. Well, as it turns out, lines that are perpendicular end up having being negative reciprocals of each other. So if this slope here is two-thirds, positive two-thirds, the slope of a line that is perpendicular to that would need to be negative, the opposite sign, and the reciprocal of two-thirds is three over two. The fraction gets flipped around. So, perpendicular lines. Lines with two lines would be perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals. So for example, if one line has a slope of two-thirds, the other line, if it's perpendicular, would be, need to be negative, and the reciprocal of two-thirds is three over two. So negative three over two. So parallel lines would have the same slope, perpendicular lines, their slopes would be negative reciprocals. So here's uh, three groups of equations. So let's, let's try to look at them and see if we can find out if they're parallel lines, or if they're perpendicular lines, or if they're neither. They're neither per parallel nor perpendicular. So looking at the it's nice when they're written in this form, y equals mx plus b form because I can very quickly see what the slope is. Oops, I wanted blue. So here, slope is 3. Here, the slope is 3. So these two equations, these two lines here, have the exact same slope. 
that means that those two lines would need to be parallel, the same slope. Looking at my second group of numbers, I see that the slope of this line is minus 5, and I see the slope of this line is positive 1 over 5. Well, remember negative 5 is really like negative 5 over 1 written as a fraction. So the slope of this line, this first one, is negative 5 over 1. The slope of the second line is positive 1 over 5. It looks to me like those are negative reciprocals of each other, so these two lines must be perpendicular. Negative reciprocals. Okay, moving on to the third set of equations. I see this one here has a slope of 2. Whoa, looking at this second one here, this is not in a form that I can easily tell what the slope is. They put this one here in general form. So I need to do a little bit of algebra to figure out what the slope is first. So I'm going to, actually what I'm going to do is, is I notice that this y term, so I'm trying to write this thing as y equals mx plus b, because then I can quickly tell what my slope is. I'm seeing that the y term is negative, so I'm going to actually add 3y to both sides. And then that's going to give me 4x plus 6 equals 3y. And now to isolate y, I just need to divide everything here by 3. So I'm going to get y equals 4 thirds x, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then I'm just going to change the sides around, write it, write it this way, y equals 4 thirds x plus 2. So a little bit of algebra there to figure out what my slope is, but now I can quickly see that the slope is 4 thirds. Well, if this has a slope of 2, and this has a slope of 4 thirds, they're clearly not the same, so they're not parallel. And if this had a slope of 2, the negative reciprocal would be ne negative 1 over 2, and this is not, not a slope of negative 1 half. So these are not perpendicular and not parallel, so I'm just going to say they're neither. So there's comparing two lines, and when they're written in y equals mx plus b form, we can very quickly tell if they're parallel or perpendicular. And if they're not in y equals mx plus b form, we might have to do a little bit of algebra to convert the equation to y equals mx plus b form, the slope-intercept form, and then we can quickly tell, in this case, they were neither. Now how about a question like this one? Find the equation of a line that is parallel to this one, 3x plus 2y plus 8 equals 0, and it goes to the point negative 5, 2. Well, we've got the point, but we don't have any other information of the line. And so, let's just quickly do a bit of review here. We have the y equals mx plus b form, and we have y minus y1 equals slope x minus x1. So we have this one. This is really good if we have the slope and the y-intercept. This one is really good if we have the slope and a point. And then there's, of course, also general form, this one here. But this one is, is not really a useful one for us to generate the equation. Um, we might want to convert some of these to general form afterwards, but usually we don't just go and write an equation right away in general form because we don't have the information in the question to, to give that one. But the slope-intercept form, great if we know the slope and y-intercept. The slope-point form, great if we know the slope and a point. <clears throat> so we've got a point right here, negative 5, 2. So I'm thinking this might be a good equation to use here. All we need to also get is the slope. Well, we know that our slope is going to be parallel to this one. In other words, the line that we're asked to find is going to have the same slope, because that's what parallel means. Same slope as this line. So if I've got 3x plus 2y plus 8, I can find the slope of that line. I just need to write it in the slope intercept form. So I'm just going to isolate y here. Bring the 3x over to the other side. Bring the 8 over to the other side. Remember every time you take a term and move it to the other side of the equation it's got to change sign. So minus 3x minus 8 and now I'm going to divide everything by 2.
to get the equation y equals negative 3 over 2x minus 4. So I don't particularly care about the y-intercept of this line, but I do care about the slope because it said I want an equation of a line that is parallel to this one. So in other words, has the same slope as this one. So I've now found my m. The slope of my line will be the same as this one, negative 3 over 2. And I also know that there's a point over here. So I have all of the information I need to write the equation of this line in slope point form. So y minus, here's y1, 2, equals slope, which was negative 3 over 2, x minus the x value, which is minus 5. So just tidying this up a little bit in this second bracket here, this last bracket rather, x minus minus 5, I could write that as x plus 5. So when a question says find the equation of a line that's parallel to this one, it's really saying find the slope of that line. So write it in y equals mx plus b form and make sure that yours has the same slope as that. So now the question was just what's the equation of a line that has a slope of negative 3 over 2 and goes to that point? I would use my slope point form y minus y1 equals slope x minus x1. Put the slope in for m, put the point that you were given in for x and y, and we have our equation of our, of our line. And now if I change this equation just a little bit, so that it was find the equation of a line that is parallel to this one but has a y-intercept of 4, now this equation here, the slope point form, is not going to be much use to me because I don't have necessarily a point. But what I do have is I have the slope and the y-intercept. So this would be a good equation to use. I now have the slope, negative 3 over 2, and I have the y-intercept, which was 4. So I could very quickly come up with the equation of this line, and this time I'd like, I think I would use y equals mx plus b form because I had the y-intercept and I calculated what the slope was. So unless the question specifically says write your answer in slope point form or um, the slope y-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, then you can choose whatever equation you want to express. Well, let's look at one last example here. In this question, we want the equation of a line that's perpendicular to 5x minus 4y minus 12 equals 0. And we want our equation to have an x-intercept of 5. All right, well, the y equals mx plus b form, a slope and a y-intercept. We don't have the slope yet. We don't have the y-intercept yet. And looking at this one, y minus y1, the slope point form, we would need the slope and a point. When you first look at it, you might think, well, we don't have either of those either. But actually, the x-intercept of 5 is a point. This would be the point 5, 0. Because remember, every time you're finding an x-intercept, so if we had, a, we had a line drawn here, there's the x-intercept. The x value might be 2, but one thing that we do know for sure is the, x, the y value will always be 0. Every line that's crossing the x-axis has a y value of 0. So really every time they give you an x-intercept, the y value is actually 0. So that's like giving you a point. So an x-intercept of 5 means the point will be 5, 0. So it looks to me like I'm probably going to be using this equation right here because I have the point, 5, 0, and I just need to do some work to calculate the slope. So the line is going to be perpendicular to this, so let's find the slope of this line. 5x minus 4y minus 12 equals 0. I'm going to bring the 4y over to this side, because that's going to make it positive. Positive 4y when I move it to their side. So now all I need to do is divide everything by 4. So that's 5 fourths, whoops, x minus 3 equals y, or in other words, y equals 5 fourths x minus 3. So this line that we were given has a slope of 5 fourths. So if our line that we're asked to find is a negative reciprocal of that, it's perpendicular, so it'll be a negative reciprocal, 
then the slope that we have will be negative four-fifths. And now we, now we have everything we need to use this. We have the slope, we have the point. There's our slope, here's our point. So y minus y1 equals slope x minus x1. The y value is zero. The slope, negative four-fifths. x minus the x value is five. And of course, y minus zero is just, just y, so we don't even need to write that one. And here would be the equation of our, of our line in slope point form. So that's how we can find the equations of lines when we know something that's parallel or perpendicular to some, some other lines. So we'll just review those concepts once more about parallel and perpendicular lines. So parallel lines, lines are parallel, the slopes of the lines would have to be the same. The y-intercepts would need to be different, otherwise, as we mentioned before, they would actually just be the same line. But the, the key idea here for parallel lines is the slopes of the lines are the same. Perpendicular lines, lines are perpendicular if the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So for example, if one slope was 7 thirds, the other one, if it's perpendicular, would be need to be negative three sevenths, negative reciprocals of each other. So those are the, the concepts there of parallel and perpendicular lines.